As Gavin goes to prep for a CT scan, I hear more from Dr. Malik about his condition. So I suppose with Gavin, he's actually been feeling run down for a few months. And the reason for that is that his heart is not beating in a coordinated fashion. So normally we have the upper chamber contracting once, passing electricity to the bottom chamber, which then nice, does a nice big contraction to send blood all over the body. In him, the upper chamber is not really beating in that efficient fashion. And there are two ways that can happen. One is called atrial fibrillation, which is total chaos in the upper chamber. So the electrical signals are so chaotic that you can't even pick them up on the ECG. And the other, which is him, is they're a little bit more coordinated than that. The electrical circuits are not working properly. They're not providing the extra boost that they would in you or I. And that lack of oomph is, I think, why he's getting the symptoms. Whilst Gavin seems to be in good spirits as he goes through with his CT scan, we speak with radiologist Professor Simon Padley on what's actually involved in the process. So the CT scan process involves the patient uh, obviously coming to a, a CT facility. The beauty of modern CT technology is that it's now so fast and the resolution of the pictures is so high that the combination of high resolution and, and high uh, shutter speed essentially means that you can freeze the motion of small moving structures like the coronary arteries in a way that we could only imagine 20 or so years ago. The CT technology that we're using here is a, a, a G Revolution CT scanner and it uses a technology which is known as a wide area detector. And what that means is that the detector array, the receiver uh, for the x-rays, is wider than the average person's heart. Which means that you only need to rotate the scanner around the patient once, or in fact for half a rotation, uh, in order to get all of the information that you need. So one of the things that the patient will, will perhaps be surprised about is the fact that the whole thing is over really in, uh, well, literally a heartbeat. I think when we met last time, I wanted to do the CT scan to rule out trouble. And what we found is a little bit more trouble. Your arteries have more chalk than I was expecting. So when pipes fur up, you know that they can harden a bit. There's a deposit of chalk and the blood vessels to the heart are no different. So we're going to stop those problems occurring by giving you a statin to lower your risk of having heart attacks and strokes. So what the statins do is take all the inflammation the heat out of the equation, that's the way statins tend to work. So they're lowering your cholesterol and by doing so leaching the inflammation out of the walls, stabilizing the situation. Now luckily he's not been unstable at all. But if this level of calcification had been there for another few years, I have absolutely no doubt he would have become symptomatic from the coronary artery disease point of view. I think we can all live a bit healthier than we are. You know, none of us take probably enough exercise. Actually, if we start simply with the diet, then we could all drink more water. Two liters of water a day is really quite useful. Cut back on the calories that we're taking because all of us take too many calories, and that includes me, and get more exercise because none of us really get enough exercise. We should get our heart rate up three times a week or so. So if we're doing that, we're already in a better position. Unless, of course, we're born into a family where everyone around us is dying at the age of 40, well then that's someone who at the age of 30 should really be getting checked out thoroughly, seeing a cardiologist, making sure the cholesterol is okay, it wasn't a blood pressure problem, they didn't have diabetes that they never knew about, or is there something else in the genes that's causing a problem? But probably by the time you get to 40, if you still have no symptoms, I would just see the GP about getting a blood test done to make sure that your cholesterol is not actually ridiculous and that your sugar is still okay. That's easy. The GPs will be able to do that very easily. As Dr. Iqbal gives some hope to his patients that there is a light at the end of the tunnel, it's clear Gavin's heart is in a safe pair of hands.